So what is Jeet Kune Do? Jeet Kune Do. It's not a style. So all of us need to stop saying that. We need to stop saying that uh, Jiu Jitsu is better than Jeet Kune Do or Jeet Kune Do is better than Jiu Jitsu and any of that foolishness. Jeet Kune Do is to unite. To make things mend, come together. It's an idea, it's a philosophy, it's a way of being, a way of seeing things. You can use it in business, you can use it in medicine, you can use it in any kind of sport, you can use it in art. It's to be open, to be fluid, to be just like water, without the, the spiel without the, the one thing to sound as cool as Bruce Lee, that in itself is not practicing Jeet Kune Do. Sometimes you'll hear in my channel, uh, you'll, you'll hear me imitate Bruce Lee. Again, it's, I'm an actor, so that's what I do. But again, even in acting, I have to make myself as open as possible because I am using Jeet Kune Do. It is not a style. It is an idea. It is a philosophy. It is not a religion, although we are very spiritual. In fact, without the spirit, you can't do this. Because you have to be good-hearted. You have to have the good intentions of doing these things because you want to enhance yourself, not because you want to go out there and hurt people. It is to become a modern-day samurai. That's what it is like. So it is not about becoming a tyrant or a punk. Jeet Kune Do is to heal the individual by showing him or her how valuable he and she is. Because if you value yourself, you only give yourself the best. Therefore, you don't limit yourself to one way of doing things or one way, one standard, one, you know. It's about being more than that. So, of course, a Jeet Kune Do practitioner, someone who practices the philosophy of Jeet Kune Do, would go into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Of course, that would be foolish not to, because you think in terms of totality in terms of openness. So you wouldn't never reject such things as Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or French Sabbat or Russian Sambo. It is just part of the things that you want to investigate. One of the things that you want to embrace is being someone who can execute those tools when the opportunity arises not to put on a show, uh, as Bruce used to put, to be cocky and full of, you know, feel pretty good and all that. <laughs> or make a really fancy movements. <laughs> See right there, I'm imitating it, him because I'm just having fun with it. I, as an actor, you know, I have to learn monologues and things like that, so it kind of helps to, uh, to learn some of the lines that your heroes used to say, like, um, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, well, yo, you can start doing Rocky because you love Rocky. And again, what is what is the uh, the lesson lesson in Rocky? It's you know, an ever evolving willpower. Yeah, so that's Jeet Kune Do. To be well rounded, that's Jeet Kune Do. So mixed martial arts, UFC, the cage fighting, uh, this, that is in the idea of Jeet Kune Do. So a lot of people will give Bruce Lee, you know, and call uh, the, the name of the father of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, mixed martial arts. And it be kind of the idea behind it, yes, it is 
very much his and again but it is not to to separate people or create a bunch of uh, straggler guys that go around you know hurting people uh or just because they're stronger right i mean if we want good examples we want people that can you know again this i've seen some videos where you have kids you know execute these uh these techniques that they see you know arm bars and elbows and whatnot on these poor kids that are being basically these are bullies you know picking on these kids i said i probably you've seen that video this chinese kid you know trying to stay alive because there's like eight of these kids you know landing elbows and knees and they want to put them in headlocks and stuff like that and it's like that's scary stuff because the stuff is available so again we want to emphasize that Jeet Kune Do is just another another style there competing for supremacy. You know, this is not what a Jeet Kune Do was ever, uh, the concept of Jeet Kune Do was ever begun or created. You know, and again, Bruce Lee always emphasized, you know, if the name Jeet Kune Do is going to make such a, if people are going to fight over it or whatnot, you know, forget it. Just, just forget the name. That just remember just to be open and receptive because truth can come from anywhere so it could come from brazilian jiu-jitsu and it can come from boxing it could come from french survival it can come from muay thai you know so but the emphasis is here to be open and just take every, any technique necessary any technique necessary to execute the job you know so that doesn't mean go in the you know, take a class in every single style, it means just be open from the start to any technique that is going to help you. So we do that. We stay open and receptive. And then you're Jeet Kune Do. Uh, I can see it in the attitudes of certain fighters, professional fighters, you know. And uh, for instance, and you see why they do so well. John Jones is one of them. From the start, when once he threw that oblique kick, I knew he was Jeet Kune Do. He was practicing the philosophy of Jeet Kune Do. He didn't belong to our team. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying that the men run into some of Bruce Lee's writings, some of Bruce Lee's ideas, and now he's executing them. That's the point. Same thing with his coach, of course. And then you have... Um, Conor McGregor, same same type of idea, same type of, uh, um, I'm sorry, not the same type of idea, the same type of individual, you know, that, that it, he's open to even those movement um, uh, workouts, you know, that most people find as silly. He is going beyond, again, he's exploring other avenues. This is why Lomachenko can be so good with his footwork, why? Because his father made him be a dancer for a few years because he knew that if you have rhythm, if you have good feet on you, you're gonna be hard to deal with. And he sure is because he will get behind you in a flash because those feet can shuffle quickly, right? And Chi Kune Do, that emphasis in footwork is so ingrained into anybody who runs into the writings and ideas of Bruce Lee. Again, not a religion, not a style, not, you know, principally or most importantly, it is not a style. So let's just stop saying that, okay? Because we sound ignorant when we say things like that. Like, Jeet Kune Do is not effective in the street. Jeet Kune Do is not effective. That's like, that's like saying that uh, jazz is not effective in music and music is not effective in jazz it's, it's, it makes no sense I should have probably picked another background <laughs> I can't see my face <laughs> uh, yeah so the idea is to be open it's, it's almost like a Zen like Buddhist like uh, uh, attitude you know of openness of welcoming you know again if you do karate or karate, I really don't know the pronunciation, so I'm just gonna say karate because it just sounds better than karate. Sounds low, so like 
anyway. <laughs> I can see the value in what you do. If you do Taekwondo, I can see the value in what you do. If you do Sambo, if you do Kung Fu, I can see the value in what you do. So it's more of a brotherhood. And Bruce, he was all into that. He was all into uniting people. He wasn't into keeping things secret. He wasn't into um, saying, I'm better than you, or, you know. His ideas were better than anybody of, the, of his contemporaries. And he boasted on that because he was he was willing to prove it because you have to be uh, kind of a loud mouth sometimes to get your point across. I mean, <laughs> otherwise, you know, your ideas die with you. And there's a lot of frustrated individuals out there, you know, that will, me included, <laughs> that will sit there and piss and moan about, we know the better way, and so on and so forth. Now, this video is not to say that I have the better way because I'm speaking about something. I'm not thinking about my ideas. <laughs> These are, I'm standing on the shoulders of giants, as they say. You know, I've studied other writers, other martial artists, other, other ways, you know, because again, Bruce emphasized on that. You know, I wouldn't be into Alan Watts if it wasn't for Bruce Lee. If I wouldn't be into... Uh, Judy Krishnamurti or, you know, Zen, any of that, you know, I wouldn't have started meditating, you know. I would have stayed away from so many things because I, I only saw things in one viewpoint and that was from a Catholic person, you know, and certain things you just stay away from when you're Catholic, you know, you just don't mess around with things because that's from the devil. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that all Catholics see these things like that, but I was, I, I saw things like that. I felt guilty about everything, okay? So that was my approach. Not to say that everybody does the same approach, okay? But the point here is that I was not right in my approach. So I had to fix my approach or retrain, rewire myself into thinking differently. So I had to tell myself over and over a different story because I grew up with and again my parents did the, you know an amazing job raising me because they taught me so many great values you know but again you do grow up and grow grow up in a in a culture where certain things are emphasized and certain things that did not necessarily click with me uh, so the seeking of more was always there. So again, in Jeet Kune Do, we emphasize listening to that inner call because it's really, it's, it's a call for honesty, it's a call for, you know, cut out the bullshit, <laughs> just get honest, come on. You know it's true, you know you reach for the donut because you're depressed. <laughs> um, you're trying to, you know, eat your feelings or whatnot. And things like that, you know, you, you, you find out your quirks. And again, that is using the Jeet Kune Do approach. It's of, of, of peeling away so you can get to the truth, the root of things. Okay, so that is Jeet Kune Do. It is not a style. So to say that Jeet Kune Do is not effective in the street, that that's, first of all, that's a fallacy. Because in Jeet Kune Do, it, you know, we emphasize, again, being um, aware. So, in essence, it makes you, uh, just using those, that concept of being aware because of you, you, your strategy, Kune Do, you run into Bruce Lee's ideas and writings. Um, you, um, you behave in such a way. So, again, somebody who does Krav Maga can practice Jeet Kune Do at the same time because, in fact, it's the, the mentalities are the same, you know? So, again, this was a military style, again, because it's reality based. We're not gonna be bullshitting with stuff that doesn't work and it's not effective. It has to be reality based, you know, and a lot of the drills that, that are in Jeet Kune Do schools, you know, a lot of it are reality based. You know, you got two attackers, three attackers with sticks, with knives, with, you know, with sticks and knives, you know, and so on and so forth, you know. Um, fire arms, again, that's part of the training as well. Again, it all, 
it has to do with the individual. Hell, even riding a horse and shooting an arrow at the same time, it could become handy at some point. <laughs> Just depends on where you want to take your training, and that is again that's Jeet Kune Do. Is that idea of wholesome, harmonious totality, being of not choosing, not going left, not going right, but staying neutral. That's it. It's freedom, freedom to choose when you are pushed to choose, meaning when there's no time for thinking. So, especially in combat, there's no time for thinking. Mike Tyson and Patton said it best. You know, everybody has a strategy until, Mike Tyson said, until you get hit in the mouth, <laughs> you punch in the mouth, Patton, until the, the fire, you know, the, the bullets start flying, basically. All strategy goes out the window. And it's all about staying aware focus on what's happening right not to the point where you're just staring you know <laughs> just to be involved in what's happening if you're in your head thinking when you're sparring let's just call it sparring because god forbid you get into a real fight and you do this and all you're thinking about is like i gotta punch this guy with my right hand you're limiting your choices so in your if your approach is I gotta take this guy to the ground because I'm a wrestler or a jiu-jitsu fighter. Your choices are limited. So, to be Jeet Kune Do or to practice the philosophy of Jeet Kune Do is to. Man, it's cold in here. I'm sh shaking about. <laughs> I got uh, that air conditioning is getting a little too high. Anyway, to 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 use a philosophy of Jeet Kune Do again is to to see through the veil of leaning towards one side and becoming too infatuated with using only one way and it's like i've you know when i'm rolling with my with my body sometimes you know you can see the ones that are just getting so comfy on the ground and like oh let's roll on the ground yeah let's roll on the ground and it's like, man let's stand up man we got because we got to start there you know um and while we're rolling let's throw strikes let's you know fuck Excuse me, excuse my language. <laughs> it slips out, you know. Talking to fighters, you know, you sl it slips out. Uh, while you're rolling, try to foul each other. Why not? Just gently, right? I mean, try to hold each other in ways that you you wouldn't hold yourself in in a in a ruled environment, like in the cage. You know, when you have a referee with uh, you know with rules and stuff like that. Get out of that because you know if you don't use it, you lose it. And, you know, you don't want to get too infatuated with point fighting and, you know, you know, letting the judges decide it. You know, you want to make sure you get out of this thing alive because it might require you having to save your life with it. You know, I heard of, a, I saw a video of this poor cage fighter in Brazil got killed by these guys who tried to mug him. So, you know, it doesn't translate, you know, always training for rules and regulations and weight classes and things like that. Again, if you do that, God bless you, you know, you trying to find, you know, get your skill to pay you some money, you know, get pay you some dividends. And, you know. Uh it's a smart thing to, to do. Why not? <laughs> but again, you know, you you wanna get out of that for a few, or still train for reality base, you know. It's like shit, what happens when the guy comes out with a stick, you know, because you know, we always wanna fight fairly, you know, and um and then, but the other guy, you never know. I have friends with the guns and shit, you know. So you never want to be starting any fights, you know. You want to, again, conduct yourself. The good thing, thing about martial arts, when you start martial, you know, they get the point of martial arts is that it's so you don't fight. Because you feel so secure within yourself that you're not out there feeling like a, excuse the word, like a bitch. You know, being susceptible to everybody, to you know, that was looking for a bitch, you know. Um, so people, people don't mess with you because you just don't look that part. In fact, you carry it within you that, you know, you just found one of the nicest people are martial artists <laughs> because they get that crap out of themselves, you know, they get that crap out of, and, and you find martial artists who are not necessarily conducting themselves right. 
they are not true martial artists. These are people who are just punks, you know. Anyway, um, a true martial artist is a modern samurai, you know. You conduct yourself with honor and respect, and you help those that you that can be that can help themselves, you know. Um, yeah, that's the way of the martial artist. Again, because again, you you are using combative ways. That's what martial means, you know, warlike. But you are an artist, first of all. And an artist, artist, an artist is a good artist when he goes from the soul, from within, from the essence. That makes him an artist. That makes him a, someone who is bringing the divinity from the sublime, from the from the abstract, from the subtle, and making it physical so people can enjoy it selflessly, like a vessel, like a a link okay the link doesn't you don't you know it's just a link you know you don't get carried away with the package that is given to you it's a link it's like a finger pointing away to the moon right um you put too fo too much focus on the on the link you lose everything else you know uh you miss out on everything else so when you we become infatuated on doing things one way and we start to defend our our flag, our our um, our style, your our national uh, um, mistakes. Because a group of people, when it's a group of people, can make a lot of mistakes. So we have to stay individuals. We have to stay independent so you know we're not we don't get carried away with the masses there's got to be those voices that have to say stop the madness in a way that's exactly what i'm doing martial arts might just end up helping out too either way we gotta we gotta do something Somebody, we have to stay individuals, we have to stay free thinking. So, Jeet Kune Do emphasizes on that. It's, it's Buddhism with strikes. <laughs> I don't know. I, it's, it's, you're going to be, again, open to things like that. Buddhist principles, Zen-like actions. Um water-like behavior, you know. Anyway, go in peace. Know that Jeet Kune Do is not a style. It is a way of life. It is a philosophy. It is a, a way of seeing life without limitations.